Hello everyone, you are watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video, I am going to cover the important neurophysiology behind the deep tendon reflex testing. In today's video, I am going to try and make the students understand clearly what exactly happens when we check deep tendon reflexes. Now we are going to address two important questions. Why do we check deep tendon reflexes and what are the important informations that we can collect and interpret during deep tendon reflex testing. Now reflex can be defined very simply as an involuntary response to a stimuli. Now when we check deep tendon reflexes, the only two things that we can appreciate is the stimuli that is the hitting of the hammer to the muscle tendon and the response in the form of muscular contraction. But there is a whole lot of thing that is going on in the background which we should be aware of to make the deep tendon reflex assessment useful. So let's start understanding what exactly happens after we hit the reflex hammer on the muscle tendon. Now let's say for example we are checking the deep tendon reflex for the biceps muscle. Now any skeletal muscle has two components the outer component and the inner component. The outer component is known as the extrafusal fiber and the inner component is known as the intrafusal fiber. Now intrafusal fibers are also called as muscle spindles and these are again of two types the nuclear chain fiber so this one you can see is the nuclear chain fiber in which the nuclei are arranged in a row and the other one are known as the nuclear back fibers as you can see here the nuclear back fibers are enlarged in the between and the nuclei are concentrated in the central part of the fiber now both these nuclear chain and nuclear back fibers are collectively called as muscle spindles and muscle spindles are the stretch sensors or the stretch receptors of the muscle which means that whenever the extrafusal fiber will go under stretch the intrafusal fibers will immediately come to know that the muscle has gone under elongation and they will pick up this information. Now having this knowledge in the background let's start understanding what happens when we hit the reflex hammer to the insertion or the tendon of the biceps muscle. Now tendon is continuous with the extrafusal fiber. When we hit the tendon, tendon itself is non-contractile. So this force is transmitted to the extrafusal fiber portion of the muscle. Now as a result of hitting this tendon and the consequent transference of this force, the extrafusal fiber goes under a transient stretch or elongation. That means there is some elongation taking place in the extrafusal fiber in response to hitting of its tendon. Now this elongation is immediately picked up by the muscle spindle. So the muscle spindle also stretches along with the extrafusal fiber. And when the spindle stretches, this information is immediately picked up and sent to the spinal cord. Now at this point, let's start exactly understanding how this information reaches to the spinal cord. Now as you can see here, the muscle spindles send this information via an afferent sensory neuron. The cell bodies of this afferent sensory neuron are situated in the dorsal root ganglion and this afferent sensory neuron is known as the 1A fiber. So the stretch of the muscle spindle gets converted into the action potential which travels along this sensory neuron and reaches the dorsal horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord and then it reaches the ventral horn or the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Now after reaching the anterior horn of the spinal cord, the 1A fiber synapses with another cell body present in the anterior horn which is known as the alpha motor neuron. And now the signals are transmitted and as a result the alpha motor neuron gets excited. In response to this, the conduction then flows along the alpha motor neuron to the extrafusal fiber of the same muscle and so as a result the extrafusal fiber goes under the contraction. So this is the complete reflex cycle 
of what is exactly happening when we are checking the deep tendon reflex. Now when we study reflex, we need to understand these all components. So what was our stimuli in this particular reflex arc? Our stimuli was stretching of the extrafusal fiber. So the stimuli here is stretching or elongation of the extrafusal fiber. Now who picked up this particular stimuli? The receptor. So the receptor here was the spindle who also stretched along with the extrafusal fiber. So the receptor for this reflex arc is the intrafusal fiber oblique muscle spindle. Now who carried the information from the receptor? The afferent and what is the afferent here? The afferent here is the 1A fiber. So the 1A fiber is our afferent for this particular reflex arc. Now once the information is carried by the afferent, it has to reach a center. So what is the center here? The center here is the C5, C6 spinal segment. Yes, this information reaches to the specific spinal segment which is supplying that particular muscle. Now what is the efferent here? The efferent here is the alpha motor neuron. So you have to write here, the efferent for this reflex arc is the alpha motor neuron. Now the efferent has to go and affect the effector. So the area of the muscle that is being affected by the efferent is your effector. So it is the extrafusal fiber of the biceps muscle. And what is the response that we get? We get a reflexive contraction of the biceps. So our response is contraction of the muscle. So this is all the information that we are getting just by checking the deep tendon reflex. Now this reflex R is also known as the stretch reflex or to be more specific is known as the muscle stretch reflex. Now one can easily interpret so many things if we know this particular physiology of the deep tendon reflex. If our deep tendon reflexes are normal that we can easily interpret that the muscle is functioning normally, the afferent fibers are functioning normally, there is no problem with the spinal segment integrity and similarly the descending alpha motor neuron is also functioning normally. Now at this point I would like to share some very valuable information with you all. Now whenever there will be loss to the integrity of this local spinal reflex arc, we will not get the reflexes. That means there will be areflexia or hyporeflexia. Now let's take up some common examples of neuromuscular conditions in which we will find the deep tendon reflexes getting diminished or absent. Now for example, let's take up the first example of myopathy or muscular disorders. So in conditions like muscular dystrophy or myopathy, the extrafusal fibers will start getting degenerated. So there will be less number of fibers which will be available for contraction. As a result, the response or the reflexive contraction will get reduced. Similarly, in neuropathies and demyelinating conditions in which there will be loss of integrity of the afferent or the efferent neurons, the impulses will not travel along this reflex arc and as a result, we will get hyporeflexia or areflexia. Now let's take up another condition of anterior horn cell disorders like we used to have poliomyelitis. So if there will be degeneration of the anterior horn cells then the action potential will not travel along the alpha motor neuron and as a result there will be no or very little reflexive contraction and so the DTR will be diminished. Let's take up another example of neuromuscular junction disorders like myasthenia gravis. Now when the action potential will not be able to cross over to the postsynaptic membrane of the muscle fiber, again the reflexive contraction will be reduced. So there is whole lot of information that we can get of why and how these deep tendon reflexes are getting diminished and what is the exact level of the problem because of which the reflexes are getting absent or diminished. Similarly, we will also be covering why the deep tendon reflexes become exaggerated and that will be covered in detail in any other neurophysiology lecture in which I will be telling you about the neurophysiology 
of hypertonia and hyperreflexia. This is one of the very first neurophysiology lecture that I usually take for my postgraduate neurology students. And now based on this knowledge, it becomes easier for me to explain the neurophysiology behind the maintenance of normal tone, the neurophysiology of abnormal tone, the neurophysiology of decortication, decelebration and the overall basic neurophysiological understanding of motor control. Now all these lectures are going to come very soon so that I can share this knowledge with you all. So don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.